Hey everybody, there's going to be three parts to this. I'm breaking it down a little bit. Um, I was asked to not just show what I have and explain a little bit why I use each. So for the villager example, I'll say I have X, Y, and Z, um, but I was also asked why do I have X, Y, and Z. So with that said, we're going to get started with the economy units and the villager. <laughs> um, I use the hammer of Kevin because it has um, a high speed rate for building and a really high gathering rate. I use the ancient Trojan Guard Chitin for gathering wood. A lot of people use alligator hide to gather food early on, but I find that if you gather wood early on, uh, you can get the houses built faster, the farms built faster, um, everything else that needs wood early on and later on the farms will produce the food and but I find early economy is where the game is anyway and this chitin works the best. Uh, the mead, I like it because of the training time. Now fishing boats, I use Nets of Argo because it has movement speed and a gathering rate. Um, there is a 20% gathering rate, but I find a little bit of movement speed gets my food in quicker. Athena's Graceful Arrows I just have on here right now as a filler, um, because Hades Arrows is what I really want, um, because it gives uh, movement speed, and um, that's really what fishing ships are all about. These sidings give me 2.9% uh, movement speed. That's the whole point of fishing ships. If you check my Persia, there is a 4.2 movement speed. Um, that's not craftable, but this one is. And you could probably find this for a very good price um, in the trade channel. And finishing up the fourth slot, uh, I decided to go with chopping the cost down by 17.6%. We don't care about damage or health, really. People that use fishing ships, um, you can ask around, would rather it be cost efficient and late game, uh, worry about farms and whatnot. Now your merchant ships, remember, are light trade ships, so you could build this, um, set this up so it could bring in more gold, or you could set this up as speed. Um, I set this up as speed, you can get 8.5% speed on this, then of course, you know, they have these arrows just to put something in the spot, but for everybody else, Hades Flaming Arrows is the way to go. Then the same armor plating for movement speed, and here I put uh, sails on so I could have even faster movement speed. You could put oars on if you would like. There's nothing wrong with it. The prices of those have come down tremendously. Now, long ships, trains, all those types of things. They used to not be very important, but now they are. You need this ship to beat the Norse legendary map. This ship is a must. So you're going to want a lot of damage because you're going to be fighting elite ships. Okay? So you go for Hero's Bow of Apollo with as much damage as you can find. Athena's Graceful Arrows for much damage as you can find. Not range. We're not looking for range. Range is not something you want on this ship for that map. Um, I do have Runic Bronze Armory. It does have range. This is not what I want. This is a armor that is just here for now. I want the armor that has 22.1 DPS because it is all about damage. Because you're stuck at age 2, you can't leave age 2 if you want to beat this map 100% and get all the chests and all the rewards. And then Hull of Levathon, as we know, it's going to cost more, but it's going to give you more damage and more health. And then of course you have your ship advisors that can add on for age 2. Now fire ships, if you, you know, you're going to play pirates or something, you want, you know, not just damage, you want other things involved. The basic the basic is uh, Dragon Fire Flask. It's the best one out there unless you're going to go Legendary Flask. Um, I have the best one in the game on my Greeks. I can't remember the name. I apologize. But when it comes to armor, 
and this is critical, um, you really, really, really want to get crush armor. It's very crucial you get crush armor so the catapult chains don't sink your ships in one hit, or two hits, depending on how much advisor help you have. Also, Hull Levathon again, more health, more damage. Now when it comes to town centers, town centers can be built in three different ways. One way, you can build it so you have gear on there to make them cost less. Gear on there where you can make it so they're, um, they build faster. Or have the gear set up that I have where they can take more hit points, more damage. You know they have more hit points in the building. Um, if I play a, a skirmish map, for example, or an Argos map that's a legendary now that I screw up. I don't want to have to restart the map. I want to hide my villagers into my town center and so then the town center can do all the damage to the five, six, eight, whatever pikemen or whatever come at me and then I can send them back out to work. So I like hit points. With that I had the hero slaying bow with 12% more life. Uh, hardwood arrows of the eagle. I have never found one. I have always bought them. Um, they're in trade. I've had a few friends of mine be able to find them for me when they farm the level 30, high 30s. Um, they're between 35 and 37. I don't think there's a 39, but I think there's 35, 36, and 37. And then, of course, the shield wall, where it has major hit points. But I believe everybody will agree that the Ares training manual is the best for the fourth slot, just because the faster you can train, the faster you can age, the better. Now, on a lot of my buildings like this dot, you're going to see these two pieces of gear. Um, this one the, brings down the cost a little bit, and then a training manual. 7.1 or better is what I tell everybody to get. If you only can afford 7.1s, which only cost a thousand coin, that's fine. These Walls are very cheap, you can get them at the Spartan store. They used to be 3 point something, but 1.3 still is better than nothing, and there's really no better wall for what it's on right now. The outpost, you go hand carved wall braces for line of sight. Most of mine have level 20s, level 23 is max, and um, level 40 lookouts of the Olympus. Now for storehouses, I do the cheaper walls again, and the training manual. And when it comes to farms, you can go one of two ways. You can go build speed, or cost reduction. I go cost reduction. I go the same 1.3, and then on top of it, this one's 11.8, but most of the ones that I have are 11.5. Um, it's really no big difference, but instead of a farm costing 100 wood, it costs about 88, 87, somewhere around there, and that's a tremendous help. Okay, now we're going to move on to the utility units. Um, I'm going to save the military for last. A lot of units in here also, you're going to see the same walls and the same training manuals. I'm not going to go into much detail, I'm just going to say this is what I have on those because I've already gone over it. With the caravans, I know you can get trade, as I said before, with high trade. But this one, um, I like to be able to have a movement speed plus trade, uh, double stitch chitin, and a reinforced worker work hat. Um, you could get the legendary, but if you compare the two, the movement speed is the same. The only thing different is line of sight, and between me and you and everybody else, it's just not worth your money, so don't waste your money. You get what I mean? Alright, um, I'm going to skip the scouts for now, and I'm going to come back to them at the very end of this section. The priests, as you see, I, they have the same rope, and it's made for uh, pure armor and bonus damage protection. And I like most of my priests, almost on every civilization, I believe, to have speed boots. Because I like them to be able to be very uh, maneuverable to get to the front line, run away, and whatnot quickly. The seer um, has a special unit that can summon a raven. Um, 
which is a scout, it's limited, it only stays in the sky for so many seconds, but it's a true line of sight, and it can't be shot down, it can't die, it just is there for X amount of time, and then it's gone. Now, the only difference between both of them is I wanted this one to be able to convert infantry, and I wanted this one to be, be able to convert siege. Nothing more, nothing less. With my houses, um, I decide I want them to build fast, not cheaper, because they're not that much money anyway. Um, I'd rather get them up faster. And with my market, the cheaper walls and the training manual. Same with my armory, same with my great hall, it's the same thing. Um, now when it comes to my defenses, for my towers and my forts, they both have the Bow of Theseus with infantry bonus damage. They both have Athena's graceful arrows that are pure damage. I would prefer um, myself to have every um, civilization have um, the legendary arrows that have 9.8% damage and 19.5% infantry damage. I'll tell you why in a minute. Plus, I find Walls of Titans with 13% or more. And with my guard towers, I um, want them to be as cheap as possible. Um, some people will say, why cheap? Why not use um, iron wall joints that are 11.5 um, instead of an 18.4, make building speed um, almost half longer. And the reason behind that is, is anybody that is able to get level 40 gear, it already has the capability of getting a craftsman hammer, that has 14% build speed, or a Kevith that has 30, or a Bless that has 45. Okay? I'm going to use Pathos as an example. Let's say you're playing Pathos, and you know you need to get five towers up before the Spearmen come. Let's say you have no hammer whatsoever, but you have this gear on your tower. You still can get up five towers with two guys, two villagers, before the Spearmen come. Okay, you have enough time, so you might as well make them cheaper. And if you have building speed on there, you have nothing to worry about. So it's just better to go completely cheaper because they are so much as it is, and you need that stone elsewhere. For the forts, I because they are so much money, and they do take so long to build. I mean, the resources are high, and the time to build them are high. You can't afford to have them take so long. So this is the only thing in my whole um, gear that I picked that uses legendary blueprints. Now back to the, to the um, arrows, I really do want you guys to understand that that infantry bonus is big. Because let's say you have your towers up and no walls, or you have your forts up and no walls, or let's say the walls fell for some reason. We all know um, archers or pelt-like units are going to shoot from a distance, and you're going to be able to kill those types of units pretty quickly anyway. And they're not going to do much damage to a fort or a tower. They're just not. They're not meant to. Cavalry, no matter what you're going to put on, they're going to be at your doorstep really fast. But infantry, let's say you have 10 pikemen coming at you you're probably going to be able to kill half of those, or more, depending on, you know, the level you're playing, or whatnot, if you have infantry bonus on your um, towers and your forts. And they can never get to your building to knock them down as easy. Now back to the scouts. There's... I want to see if I can explain this the right way. Most people are going to use the first scout with the sword. Okay? The base line of sight is six for both of them. They both start with the same line of sight. Now, this is what I recommend for the casual player that plays this game once a day, three times a week, and whatnot. This gear that I'm going to point out. This sword. It, you can find a level 15 for about 10k, 15k. This vest 
And before you freak out and say you see it for 80,000 to 100,000, I'm going to tell you how to get it for free. And then a looking glass anywhere between 20 to 25. That's where you're wanting to find. And it's going to cost you about 30, 35k. Uh, maybe 40, depending on how good of a deal you can get. And that's what you want for this scout. Now, if you do have money, you can do it and set up like I do. Make this scout, have the sword, have the Homer's Vest of Foresight, and I decided to put the scout's protector on there so the scout can kill things like boars, lions, um, you know, all those animals out there that I can kill your villagers real easy, this scout can do on his own with an extra 49% life. If you have money, if you're a veteran player and you have some coin and you really want some good line of sight, this guy's pretty cool. This bow and arrow, this bow out there, is a lot of money, but it's going to come down in price, I feel, because there's not that many new players in the game, so a lot of people already have this bow. People like me, I have eight, and I bought them before patch. Now, you have people out there that have made a hundred of these before patch. Not just one person, like 20 people. So the price is going to come down eventually. It might go back up if a lot of people come into the game, and it will go back up when a new civilization is released. But if you can find this for about 20 to 40k, go ahead and buy it. Now these arrows, on the other hand, there's better ones. I think have 7.9 line of sight, but they're both going to be very expensive, very rare to find. Again, the looking glass between 20 and 25 is, idea is, is ideal. If you can get better, go for it. And the vest, the Homer's Vest of Foresight. Now, to get this vest for free, um, if you don't have your Greeks yet, or if you do have your Greeks fully geared, make a new account. Start it all over from the beginning. Get your five aids that you can pick from the very beginning. And... The very main um, quest giver, do all the quests from him until you get a scout. Or get a little guy on a horse, your scout, next to your uh, palace. And when you get him, he's going to give you some quests to do. And when you finish those quests, you can pick this as a reward. So you don't have to pay 80 to 100k for this vest. It will take you about an hour and a half at most to do. Especially with all your aids that you get, because you get five, you'll to go through um, some of those quests very quickly. And then, if you want, you can do it, farm it, sell it, bring the price down for everybody. So if somebody wants to buy this, they can buy it for 5k. I believe that was it. And we'll move on to our military. Okay, I'm going to start with the skirmishers. The skirmishers are a unit that are that could help you in alliance quests, um, but any really hardcore legendary, not so much. So what I've decided to do with the skirmisher is to be able to put infantry, uh, not infantry, but um, ragged bonus damage. Um, you want them to kill the archers quicker and even the pelts quicker, so I put this javelin on there, but I also want to make sure they cannot die quickly against piercing damage from an archer. So this one, as you see, the Ajax War Shield has piercing armor and a little bit of damage. Not a lot, but a little bit. And then the robe, it has piercing armor and then bonus damage protection from anything that can hurt a skirmisher. Um, and then I like to put an Argo helmet on them just so they can see more of the map. Um, it's kind of like a really good um, unit for um, your alliance quest, where if you have a unit that's marching around and you need a lot of line of sight, he will give that to you if you don't have a scout. Your hard jars are a little tricky. I've tested out this unit with multiple gear, just like I've done with all the infantry. So remember that. This is what I've come up with. His DPS is low. So he's better off split, okay? Some health and some uh, 
uh, DPS. So I've decided with him to put a damage and health axe on, plus damage and health shield with some, a little bit of crit. If you can't afford this, that's absolutely fine. You can get the Spartan shield from Sparta. It's 7.9 health and 7.9 damage. Do I think it's better? Maybe. It could be. The only reason why I don't have them is because you needed to play PvP, and I'm not a PvP player. It could be just as good, maybe it's better, maybe it's a little worse. But if you don't want this shield, get that one. It's 2,100 coins, and you can get as many as you need. I decided to go for infantry armor, and then a gauntlet, and this is key that I tell everybody. You want 32 gauntlets, okay? And the reason why it used to be that I say 32 and up is because you want the damage to be 7.9 plus. This is a 31. This is well boosted. So if you find 14%, 7.9 and up, get that gauntlet. That will be very beneficial to you. Now, your Berserker, on the other hand, has a huge DPS. So... You want an axe that has big DPS. Do not get any of the legendary axes. The critical, 6.5, it's not worth it. It's definitely not worth the price it's going for. People are wasting their money and they will see why eventually. It's just the critical has been dropped too much. If it was 3x like it used to be many patches ago, it would be worth the price. Maybe even more than what it is. But I decided to go with the pure DPS axe, and this is what I think everybody should put on there. Also, um, Vesta Theseus, so you have some infantry armor with health. Now, the fourth slot, there's three ways to go. One, you could go speed because they are kind of slow. And they're already a very powerful unit as it is. The other way is because they are 140 gold, you could put gauntlets on to reduce their cost. The best way to go, that I will not go, is putting a is putting uh, gauntlets on them. 32 or better. They already cost 140 gold. I don't need them costing 175 gold with Ramses. It's too much money. Yes, the unit will be better, but I do not want to have to deal with that kind of cost in a game. I'd rather replace my unit instead of have my unit take one more hit. Or maybe two more hits. I don't know, haven't been tested with gauntlets, I don't know, but I'd rather be able to move quicker, but that, that's just my opinion, but a gauntlet would probably be best for maybe everybody else. The Oof Haydens are an awesome unit, they're very fun. Um, they get a 3.0 um, multiplier to Ragged and a 1.5 to Calvary. Well, with their bonuses and after they're fully, you know, upgraded through the army and everything, their multiplier for Ragged is 6.0. That is sick. That's crazy. I mean, think about it. You do six times the damage. That's nuts. This unit is quick with eight speed. This guy is awesome. Um, so, with saying that, I decided to put uh, Light Spear Saragon on there. So, they got 1.5 goes to 1.7. Five, um, for uh, Calvary. Then the reason why I decided to go with um, bonus damage protection is I wanted to make sure that this unit was protected 26.5% more against anything that has bonuses against infantry, like Bowman. I know I, I mostly go you know, infantry armor, but this guy has no bonuses against infantry. That's his weakness, is somebody that's gonna, that is infantry that's gonna hurt him. So I wanted to make sure that he was really strong against cavalry and, you know, a ragged unit. But even though it says 26.5, it still will give 26.5 bonus damage protection against anything that will hurt him so even if it's an infantry unit you'll still get that little bit of protection just not the 33 percent that i normally get and then of course a really good gauntlet your chiefs base 
um, armor is 0.5 um, for crush and piercing. Um, when it's all said and done, they're both 0.5. That's really good. But it has nothing for your infantry. So I decided instead of putting hit points on there that I would put infantry armor on there. So when it's all said and done with all the upgrades, it's 0.5 for infantry, 0.5 for crush, and 0.5 for piercing after the upgrades. Which makes it so this guy only takes half the damage. And then of course I put cavalry melee armor on there to boost it up a little more. And then a good gauntlet helps also. Now when it comes to your bowman, this bowman does not have rank. He's not a ranged bowman. Like my Celtic bowman is 35 range. My Babs bowman, chariot archers, are 35 range. Persia, 43 range. Um, toxins don't use, don't even remember the range because I use gastros that have a 35, 39, or 41 range, depending on what gear I put on. Chariot archers, I don't remember. It's been too long since I've used them, literally over a half a year ago. <laughs> um, but they, but this archer only gets 33 range. Now, show the bows that I, bow that I use, and then the arrows of Actian, a DPS tunic, and a training sword. Um, they have 11 train just like the Celtic Empire, which I hate, so I put a training sword on it. It brings it to 9, and it's a little more reasonable, and you can get them out pretty quickly. Now, the reason why I like this archer, um, even though it is lower range, you're not going to want to take a ballista on, you're not going to want to take towers on, but it does cause snare. That does work. I've tested it and witnessed it. I want to get age 3 advisor uh, Cosmos because he adds snare. Um, that's the only thing that I'm looking for right now. If anybody has it, hit me up and I'll buy it off you. But it also has a faster rate of fire I found. I don't know if it's intentional. I don't know if the dev team screwed up, but I'm not going to say anything because it feels like this Bowman shoots faster than any other Bowman. The Calvary kind of sucks. I'm not going to go much time here. Pretty much I'm going to say this one kills archers really well, this one kills cavalry really well. And this is the gear that I decided to put on them. I'm really not going to go into much detail about it because they're really bad. I just wanted this horse to be able to have a high DPS and a decent gauntlet. I know I went below my 7.9. It's because this guy really is that bad. The horseman isn't really bad, but isn't really good enough to be used. Um, I might do a test with him to see, but he does have a high speed, so I decided to put boots on him. Now their siege units are a little unique. This guy is the ram, okay? He walks around with a big club and he is um, the Norse's ram, but his star tech allows him to be able to hit anything, including villagers, units, so that's what their star tech does. So I decided to put building bonus damage on him, plus a mixture of health and damage, because I wanted to make sure he had enough health because he has to get close to hit, and when saying that I made sure he had um, speed to get up there closer. You want to put something for damage, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. Or if you want to use um, heavy cedar beams to have damage and health, and it costs more, there's nothing wrong with that either. Stone thrower, rock thrower, log thrower, it's all the same. Um, I decide to go with building bonus damage, not range. Uh, sometimes I do range, but not this unit. I'm not going to do range with this unit. And then I also get um, a good medium armor that has damage. And then the wheels, or heavy cedar beams if you're not in my league. My highlighted unit is the Throne Axeman, which I'll get to last. But right now, the War Dogs, a very fun unit. They don't do much in the Legendaries and Cypress that I found. 
but they are fun to use. So, when gearing them, I decided to go speed. Um, so I have 7.5 movement speed with this spear. Um, Robes, and, Robes and Menace, I wanted to make sure I got movement speed, but I had to keep, give them some health, because if they didn't have any health, they would they would die too quickly. I mean, you could use a double um, chitin to get 5 point some speed, but it's not that much more, and you're going to lose a lot of health. And of course, boots. Now, these next three, you see I have the cheaper walls, and then uh, two manuals, two Aries, and one 7.1. And the wonder, a little cheaper and build faster. And when it comes to spearmen, pikemen, there's three things you need to think of. A high DPS, high hit points, and train fast. So you get just a pure DPS spear, high hit points, uh, cloth armor, and a training sword to train fast. Now back to the highlighted unit. The throwing axemen are great. Um, I already got a video up with Soli where they have 930 hit points and they tank tremendously well. I think they are their best tanking unit in the game. I almost want to go out there and say they are the best tanking unit for every civilization in the game. I, before the Norse, the best tanking unit hands down was Spara, Sparabara for Persia. And the reason why is because it could take a lot of abuse. Now, so can this unit. This unit can take three to five hits, just like the Sparabara. Does not have as good crush armor, but it does have something the Sparabara does not have. This unit can has ten range, so it can attack anything close to him. Unlike traditional meat shields, you know, only five or six of them are actually fighting, and the rest are behind them just standing there. We've all seen this before. And this is one reason why I hate the meat shield strategy. Just hate it. Not my whole army's fighting. But this one, if you get if the AI gets right in your face, and you have 160 of them, they're all fighting. And they're all tearing down the AI very quickly. Even though with this gear, I only have 21 DPS. 21 DPS for a meat shield that they all can hit the AI at the exact same time is very good. When the Sparabara is in their 30s, I want to say, maybe high 30s, but they all don't hit them at the same time. Only 15, 20, 30 hit them out of a full army. And with this unit, they all hit them. So it's way more DPS. So with saying that, um, I decided to go a health gear on this one. I found the best health gear that I could. Um, there's boosted gear of this. And I did go with Greaves. I am going to test them out with uh, Gauntlets when I find a Ramses to see um, how much better they are. I don't think they'll be better. They're going to be a little weaker because right now I die between three to five hits. I'm hoping I die between two and four hits. If it's lower than two, they're definitely not worth it. I'm hoping hoping that it stays between three and four. Um, that fifth hit that I usually die of is when I have literally less than 50 hit points left. So it's very low. That's why it worries me. But with all that said, I hope you guys got some good input, some good advice. Um, I hope you all have as much fun as I did during this civilization. As you see, I'm almost at 800 uh, gear score, so I didn't need the best of the best to do what I needed to do. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on my YouTube page or on the forums. It's very easy to get a hold of me. I answer everybody's uh, private messages, inbox, or even if you need any help on anything, you can contact me in the game. You all have a good day.